Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Security on red alert over threat to Buhari and El Rufai. NDLA arrest eight in Lagos, Abuja, Enugu airports. Omar Gege's aide shot dead. Fayemi Fashala, Muslim Muslim to get a winning strategy. DMO explains sorry debt service note. Ipman on why petrol queues persist. Zenith is 13th. Then it is 13th time best tier one bank with $2.75 billion. And uh, police arrest four fake soldiers in Lagos. Okay. Let's start with... Um, I'm sorry, with NDLA. Go ahead, NDLA. Go ahead. Um, so the NDLA has arrested, you see, two women and six men over alleged attempts, of course, to import... Um, illicit drugs um there were many they were caught with hundreds of cocaine pellets and um that they were trying to export uh, import from nigeria and also exportation of thousands of tramadol tablets and they gave a few names here uh an oko polo kichuko was caught at the airport he had just um, got off um, the ethiopia um, he had just come in from Addis Ababa. So he had 76 pellets of cocaine on him. He said that he had always sold uh, women's wigs and hair attachment before finding himself in this business. You know, there were so many other people to um, one particular person, Chijoke, 529 pellets of cocaine weighing over 11 kg, concealed in a bag. Um, a young lady, 29-year-old Miss Honora, was um, um, arrested at the Enugu airport. She too had, you know over 2 kg cocaine in her, mm -hmm. in, her, in her bag, concealed in two designer women handbags. That in her own case, she had like a false lining in the bags and the drugs were found within it. Mm -hmm. So many other arrests were made in, you know, from this. And it just goes to show, first of all, thank, thank God for the NDLE for, keep, for doing a good job. And just a warning to, you know, everyone out there, first of all, They'll catch you. Second of all, you're hurting not just yourself, but so many other people. Just does not, it's not worth it. So quickly, the Fasha Lafayette and me and the other APC chieftain talking about the Muslim Muslim ticket. So yesterday at an interview, the Minister for Works and Housing was asked about his relationship with the APC presidential candidate, which he said was good. And he said that he's very involved in his um, aspirations, except that, you know, he's not... Oh, um, putting it out there, obviously, in public, yet. And he says that, according to him, Ashwadu is the best person to drive this country to prosperity. He says that he, because he has worked with him, he knows him, he believes in his capacity and vision. And when he went on the Muslim-Muslim ticket, he said, the Muslim-Muslim ticket is not an issue because we put religion into public life. Religion should be taken out of public life, and we should leave religion where it belongs in people's personal life. And there are ways of, you know, using it. He said, who, 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 should be, who should stop being afraid? Who cares who provides what we need? What we need is what we should focus on and the ability of the person to do that. But, you know, the whipping of Muslim Muslim ticket is a major distraction. And um, Fayemi agreed with him. He also talked about how not so relevant that issue was. Emami, uh, Ayiri Emami, to, join, to, you know, to talk about how not so relevant that was. And amongst other things that the Minister for How Works and Housing talked about, because I watched the entire interview for one hour yesterday, he talked about works happening across the country. And he talked, when he was asked about the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and how long it was taking, he explained that, you know, on the side after the camp, the regime camp, there are works still outstanding because Oyo is doing certain drainages that is slowing down contractors completing the work. He talked about the, the Second Niger Bridge being complete by December. So these two major roads will be complete by December. And you talked about many other yeah. things. Actually. Okay. I, I was going to take the DMO because everybody's worried that the revenue we're making is not enough to even pay for our debts. Um, so the Miss um, <laughs> Patience, on, Ms. Patience Oniha, she's the Director General of the Debt Management Office, was saying yesterday, retweeting that if revenues were high, we would have been able to pay for our debts. But currently, Nigeria earned 1.6 trillion naira between January and uh, mid-year, and paid $1.94 trillion as debt. So obviously our debt servicing is much more. I think the Honorable Minister of Finance also 
mm -hmm. um, mentioned this. He said it's not feasible to make any provision for the ministries and capital expenditure with this kind of low funding on our budget. Also, I think there was a gentleman, um, his name is um, Dr. Odegaard, lamented that $150 billion total national debt it, it makes Nigeria insolvent. And also ways to generate revenue is obviously VAT. We talked about that, so added value, added tax. He also said improving, other improving measures, removal of subsidy, electricity subsidy, um, granting universities and polytechnics autonomy to also be, to be revenue generated on their own. And he, he provided quite a few other things. He said that, um, um, and other staff, remove staff salaries or increase right size civil service and freeze employment for a while and use the savings to augment the minimum wage and provide welfare cushions. So he's providing a few solutions here, but the truth is that what we are making is not financial enough to raise down. In the next few years, we're going to be in serious financial crisis. <sighs> Nigeria is already in financial crisis. What does... <sighs> Not it will be worse. It. Yes. Okay. So I want to take the Ipman. petrol Ipman. So Ipman, that's the Independent Petroli As Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, has um, given the reason why, um, the reason for the queues still persisting despite the change in price from 165 to 175. Said that the government has. The, that he said um, one of the main factors that they still have queues because. We logistics impediments are still on ground. Bad roads, raining season. Non-payment of the petroleum equalization funds promptly and distribution impediments. He also mentioned that the supply is not enough. So we have only NNPC bringing in petrol, but they are not supplying enough to meet the needs of Nigerians. So the queues will still persist until the petroleum equalization funds are paid promptly, until we have ease in transportation, good roads, facilities that will make it convenient, and more importantly, when they bring in more supply of petrol into the country. Moving on quickly to the punch. One hour interview. PDP challenges Tinubu again. APC says Ashwaju will floor Tiko. Hypertensive man die as bribe chasing last man men seize vehicle. That's so sad. Loss of fever, cholera kill, 240 experts express worry. Removal of, removal of subsidy. And NPC import monopoly will end Q says marketers. Outrage as terrorists flog trained abductees and threaten Buhari. You must perform, billionaire brother tells Oshun, governor-elect. Registered voters hit 7 million in Lagos, says INEC. Rep someone ministers BPE over power plant sale. Insecurity, our Greek imports exceed exports by 443 billion naira. Financial crisis, NCAA audits distressed airlines. And marginal fields operators may earn 4 trillion naira um, annually. Okay, let's... So the human interest quickly. Let's start, yeah. And I hope that this matter, um, you know, is taking with the eggshell around it. So these last mile operatives were operating along, along the Ogulano Drive and they caught uh, so somebody who had, you know, uh, according to them, ran against the traffic light. Um, the family of... Sorry, the, a man known as Mudibo Usman is a bereaved exchange operator and his son was conveying him to the foremost... Um, radiology a consult oh. hospital you know, on Ogula no Drive to pick up a test result for his child while he himself was heading to the Living Heart Hospital in Lekki for a test. Obviously had a heart condition. And, you know, they kept saying, he kept saying to them, I'm really sorry, I need to go to the hospital. It's an emergency, but I not, just want to pick up this. And, you know, that's what happened. Now, these operatives escorted the car to the foremost um, radiology center, after all the pleading, they were demanding 50,000, which the man was kept pleading with, I don't have that money now, I'm heading to the hospital. They insisted. They followed them there. As he went in to pick up the test, they took the car away. So by the moment the son and him came out and he saw he couldn't find his car, he slumped. Oh my Unfortunately, God. Unfortunately, he died. And the family have gotten these two last mile operatives arrested because the boy went to their yard and found them and said, see, you just cost my father his life, he's dead. They, at that time, they said, you can take the car. No. This system has already been automated. I'm not saying that if he, if he jumped the light, he should have been let go because of his health. Yes. But there's a system. Yes. You can flag off his plate number no, and you, you know how you can put it. Why did you have to take, take the his car, car away. in his health condition, even though he had told you about his health condition? Because they wanted the money in their pockets. Mm -hmm. They didn't want the money paid yeah. legally into their account. So I hope that they, they, they follow it through and these two people are made to you know, face the consequence of their action. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have um, the last... Uh, uh, just oh, let me go on a break. Okay. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thank you for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Mariam had a story. Yes, yeah, so just um, the regular update from NCDC, that's our Nigeria Center for Disease Control on Lassa fever. Um, so they say a total of 162 people so far have died of Lassa fever this year. And there are um, 847 confirmed cases of the disease in the country across 24 states and 99 local governments. Monkey pox cases also are on the rise. Um, they say that um, the confirmed cases have increased 117 from 101, and um, it's spread across you know, many of our states. Cholera as well is on the rise. Uh, a total of over 2,523 suspected cases of cholera, including 78 deaths, have been reported. And the Nigerian Medical Association uh, the president is worried because, especially, he says with monkeypox, that when one person dies, it affects everyone. And so we need to pay <clears throat> attention to, you know, our hygiene and everything that, you know, they've told us to pay attention to, as well as remembering to also keep to the guidelines of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It just seems like there's just so many diseases just right. out there right now. Let me take the major headline. Yes. So, we want to take a story? Yes, Go ahead. please. I want to take the story of the blackouts looming tomorrow. And that's because the NLC wrote a letter on the 22nd of July saying that they are going to be joining ASU in solidarity <laughs> for the fact that the, the issues they raised that made them go on strike hasn't been resolved. Now, the electric... Um, the, on Tuesday, the, the, the strike is supposed to take place tomorrow on Tuesday. Now, the Nigerian Labour Congress are joining academic union staff, but now the electric city workers have decided that they will be joining on this Tuesday in solidarity, that they would also be going on strike, that there will be blackouts. 26 is tomorrow, Tuesday. And they said that they, there are issues within their own sector too, and they are also having, they have children, people that they know that are, have been at home because there was a strike situation. I, they use the information to also mention that the national grid keeps shutting down. Mm -hmm. It just happened again, okay. where we generated about 3,000 something, and it, shot, it dropped to 50 megawatts. The entire country mm. had 50 ah. megawatts. Yeah, we got to zero now. Where were you? Abi? Nima? Yeah, got we to crashing, 50. crashing, 50 crashing. Has been uh, we, 50. Ah, yeah. we did zero. There was zero. You read it in the, the papers. Yeah, it went down to zero. Total, that was like yes, three, yeah, last week. Yeah. So, yeah, seven times. based on all of this, they are also joining the strike. And we should not wait until everything shuts down completely tomorrow oh, just... before we resolve the issue. The president has given ultimatum, but it's not about ultimatum. Mm. Resolve. <laughs> so, while that is going on, PDP and APC are throwing jabs at each other. So, mm. I took you through the mm. first jab when he had an interview on Friday, where he was saying that um, he had, uh, that Tinubu had, uh, as the president, the, um, the flag bearer for APC, had begged him to be his running mate back in 2007, but he refused because he didn't want a Muslim Muslim ticket. And <laughs> he also challenging Ashwaju to, um, to a debate, to more like a, a, a media interview. He says that he's sure he's not mentally present, would, would not be mentally present to do a proper interview. Of course, Ouch. Tinubu Shibu, no, no um, came for him. Felix mm. Morda from That's the National Policy Secretary of the APC says that Atiku cannot defeat anybody. That's, you know, that he's not surprised that taking Atiku seriously. That they should understand that... Um, Campaigns don't flag up until September. After that, eh, hey, let's not talk about debates and interviews that right now is not necessary. You know, that besides, their principal is very, very busy. But, you know, as much as I, self is still healthy, I like the conversation. There's no, there are no insults to trading, which is, like, which is good. But we still want, at the end of the day, each yeah, of the candidates be must be able to speak to Nigerians, articulate their plans, uh, and, 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 and tell us exactly what they want to do. So we're not going to be, we're going to be voting based on issues yes. and sentiments. On issues. Ability to solve the problem. Issues. Issues. Okay, moving on quickly to the point. Raging gubernatorial wars, parties, unity under threat in states as godfathers battle godsons. <laughs> 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 uh. I get it dramatic like so. <laughs> Round the police officer drugs, rapes in pregnant 15 year old niece in Nasarawa. Deputy governors as endangered political species. NGX um, reverses bullish run. That's uh, Nigerian Forex. Reverses bullish run with 45 BPs dropping market. Okay. Nima has a okay. human interest story. Human interest story, yes. So this inspector of police in Nasarawa, Lafia, decided to accommodate his niece, a 15-year-old girl who he put in school, but had ulterior motives. Eh? And so the moment she moved in, 
he will drug her and rape her. Oh. And she, wake, she said the first time she woke up to pains and blood all over her, signs oh that she had been this virgin. After a while, he continued to drug her with different dangerous substances to continue to have carnal knowledge of her. And he did that up to a point and got bolder and decided to do it without drugging her. And he would threaten and say, if you dare, your mother, you know you, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'm a police officer. <sighs> Fortunately, okay, sadly, she, she got pregnant. And he decided to proceed, drug her, so, to uh, uh, forcefully remove the, uh, about the uh, pregnancy. She had complications, and so a medical evacuation was composed, really done. But by the time she, this was done, she had spoken to her friends and teachers in school, and they reached, they reached out, not only to what, they reached out to a civil society group, the Citizens Center for Justice, and the F F um, Federation of um, FIDA. FIDA. I can't remember yeah, what so FIDA is. Yeah. And so they took it up. They got the photos, the fetus. fetus and the DNA of the fetus and that of the man matched mm. to establish, you know, Good. that, you know, this was a constant abuse because Good. he then was trying to deny everything and, you know, and find a way to run away. But fortunately, this has been done and I'm hoping that justice will be gotten I'm for even this. happy that they were able to... The be police proof. also immediately... Yes. They need to okay. administratively within the system. Moving on now to Vanguard tension in INEC in, in flight in threatened... 2023 elections. Terrorist flock kidnapped train victims in fresh video. That's our hot topic a bit later. Russia Ukraine war. EU six additional gas suppliers from Nigeria. NLC meets us to others on solidarity. Larry, I think you took that story already. Mm -hmm. I was going to take it. Muslim Muslim ticket again. Article Tinubu in verbal war. I took that story. One fear dead as Yoruba Hausa clash in Ibadan. Delegates at APC presidential primaries now regretting their decisions. This Amici. Mm -hmm. And uh, APC's Muslim Muslim ticket slap on Northern Christian says retired um, Commodore, Air Commodore Suleiman. Okay. Should I start with Amechi? Please. Uh, so the uh, Minister for <laughs> Transportation, he says that, okay, he was in Port Harcourt at the 60th birthday celebration of, the, of Apostle Eugene Ogu, who is the General Overseer of Abundant Life Evangel Mission. And he was, our minister was talking, he says, those who voted at the APC primaries, who are they? They're ordinary Nigerians um, that they collected small money from, you know, during that time. And now they are regretting their, their, their they're saying they made a mistake and they're regretting their choice. And so he was imploring the clerics there that they should please pray for Nigerians and ordinary Nigerians so that they can vote for the type of leadership that we need. Um, he said also that the, he mentioned that the bishops at, at the unveiling of Shatima may not have been bishops, but they are Christians. And, that, um, and then he also goes ahead to say, please vote for APC. I'm not joking. May God, may God make you vote for the right candidate that will change Nigeria. Same, yes, yes. <laughs> he talked about how insecurity is Who worse. Says it is not, yes, yes, insecurity is worse than when he was there. Maybe I don't know now if he meant when he was governor of River State. Oh. It wasn't that bad because he would go into when they would hear of uh, a situation, they would go into the bushes and chase these people. But that's not what's happening right now. So, okay. okay. The gas uh, supplies from Nigeria by the EU. So the the um, director general of the European Commission's Energy Department, Matthew Baldwin, was talking to the Reuters newspaper and he said that the EU is looking at increasing gas supplies from Nigeria. He said presently Nigeria supplies 14 percent of what they use, but looking at a possible cut of supplies from Russia, they are then looking to increase this. It's promising. We, do we have the infrastructure? Because the last time we were debating this, the infrastructure was a major issue, but then he said Nigeria has promised that they should come in to, for talks in August and hopefully. Okay, we have to wrap up. Is there any important story that I wanted to take? We have to run, I think, run out of time. This issue of Akwabio and the Lawan, I don't know what's going on. No. He said that they might be giving him lifeline. They might be somehow, somehow. You know, they're not supposed to be running in this election. They're not supposed to run for because, two because, offices. Yes. And they ran for the president and now they're looking at the same. They were supposed to back resign, back. remember? And yes. They, they did going resign, to... so they don't have a chance. They don't have, they don't have the same, consequence. They're trying to sneak them in. consequence for that. I think it's two years. We have oh. to run and it's unfortunately we're out of time. We didn't very, take it to daily sun. Very, very sad. That's all we can take on front page review. So, our hot topic is what hmm. Nigerians are talking about. This video that went viral, it's quite a heartbreaking story. Stay with us. We'll be Stay tuned. 
Your View will be right back.